Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here. Meteor Mark's weather eastern, northeastern, and hurricane northeastern. Let's get into it. We here we have the tropics continuing into November here. Look at this. Is this tropical storm Lisa? Yeah. This is going to continue to be a problem, and I think this has the chance of becoming a Category 1 or maybe even a Category 2 hurricane. Look at this. GFS taking it a little bit farther to the north and stronger as we go in time. What will be the impacts from Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, and southward to Honduras? And will this happen to evolve into a situation where it reemerges into the Bay of Campeche? We'll explore those opportunities and what paths this storm could take. And guess what? Look at this, right around San Juan, Puerto Rico, through day five and six into next week, we have the possibility of another tropical system developing here. Two areas of low pressure and a strong out area of low pressure could develop something into a named storm here as we head into the weekend into early next week. And if that weren't enough, yeah, we have Tropical Storm Martin out here into the North Atlantic, my friend. Look at that on its way to become a hurricane. Thankfully, only shipping lanes a problem. And will we see a wintry blast in the eastern part of the United States as we head towards Thanksgiving? A white Thanksgiving for some. We'll take a look at the weather pattern. And if that weren't enough, just a few days ago, I released my winter weather outlook 2022-2023. It is in a link in the description down below. So after you're watching, go ahead and watch it. Let's get into it. All right, so here we go, starting off with the GFS. This is Tropical Storm Lisa. As it continues on Wednesday here, this is the path we're looking at. I think this will become a hurricane. Let's back that up just slightly. This will become a hurricane just north of uh, Honduras here. So essentially what we're looking at on Wednesday, this is 5 a.m., system really starting to move in the direction of Belize here and the Yucatan Peninsula. The GFS here is taking a bit farther north. That's debatable. Here's the guidance taking it right just south of Belize City. That would put the strongest core of the winds and surge here into the Belize City area, right into central Belize. Uh, but for the most part, we still have to watch, you know, the southern envelope of the storm. The GFS is indicating this is going to become stronger and kind of ride up a little bit further to the north here, which is an interesting solution, and then briefly head towards the southwest here once it reaches inland. And look at this. As we head towards, this is towards latter part of the week. Look at this is Friday morning at 2 a.m. This is getting into the Bay of Campeche. So we could be looking at a system that tries to redevelop here. Here it is. This is Friday, and I know a lot of you in the Gulf of Mexico don't really want to hear this this time of year, but we have the potential here for a system. This is Saturday. Take a look at it here. So what we have here is the potential for a strengthening tropical system and whatever's left of Lisa here, and a big old cold front to the north. This should help pick the system up to the north, and let's see what actually happens with this system as we go in time. It pretty much gets absorbed into it, and look at that. It pretty much fizzles out. So that is one of the good news solutions here. Now, we have problems out here into the Eastern Caribbean. Take a look at this. This is a system that we're going to continue to watch here. Let me just back this up a few frames. So this starts actually right around Friday here. Look at this. We have a strung out area of low pressure here just south of Puerto Rico, and it's going to be creating showers and thunderstorms. We have another piece of energy right along the South American coastline here down towards Colombia and Venezuela. That's, and look how much moisture is associated with this. This is quite a big disturbance. And as we head towards out in time here, take a look at this. Yeah, this is San Juan, Puerto Rico. This is where you're going to start to see a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity as we head towards Saturday. We might have something trying to develop here just to the north of Puerto Rico here, right in this area. So if you're in Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, Hispaniola, you definitely want to stay tuned to this. And look what's really starting to develop down here. This might actually pinwheel towards the northeast here. Watch as we go out in time here. Let me just speed this up just a little bit. Look at this. This is Sunday. This is our solution for Sunday. This is getting down onto the island of Hispaniola. There's the Dominican Republic. There is Puerto Rico. So this could be a big deal here. We could have a strengthening tropical system here. Pretty formidable here on the GFS. We'll see momentarily what the euro is indicating. But yeah, we could have... This is a big old area of storminess. And look how this comma shape heads towards North America here. This is for Monday, November 7th. Still really clear here across the eastern part of the country but as we go in time we might have some further problems here as the tropics are aggravating this the only good news here is this high pressure 
seems to really be causing a lot of sinking air and look at how it starts to really push this trough axis out of the picture. So that's probably some good news here for the U.S. East Coast. And look at this. We definitely have the potential for tropical systems forming in all of this mess as we head further out in time. And look at that. Yeah, the tropics remain pretty active for this time of year. All right, so taking a look at the latest Euro here, it is a little bit further to the south than the GFS, a little bit weaker, but still becoming a pretty formidable system here. This is by, so let's just back this up a few frames. This is Wednesday, early Wednesday morning. It's skipping along the northern coast of Honduras here. So here's the coast of Honduras. Here is the coast of Belize here. So this is the area I'm concerned about. I'll show you the rainfall totals here momentarily on the euro as well and this literally takes it into belize city here so if you're in belize honduras parts of the yucatan peninsula definitely stay tuned start preparing start preparing for at least a category one hurricane potentially a category two look what the euro does with this though by saturday it brings it over towards the bay of campeche here and this is what i'm a little worried about you see this area of high pressure over here towards florida the flow pattern is like this and I showed you on the GFS, yeah, that system might try to make a run to the northeast. Now, on the Euro, it's interesting. There is an impulse of energy from the north that comes out of Texas, a big old complex of thunderstorms that helps initiate this system actually retrograding back towards the coastline here. So that's, that's good news for the northern Gulf Coast. That's bad news for the coastal Bay of Campeche areas. But we'll continue to keep an eye on it. And if that weren't enough, this wasn't showing up too much on the GFS. But look at this. This is by Thursday. Since we are on the Euro, I do want to show this to you. Look at this. Potential for a tropical system by Thursday, November 10th here. It's showing up on the Euro here. We'll keep an eye on it. And as you can see, we head towards the next frame here. This is November 11th. This is forming into pretty formidable systems. So if you're in Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, please stay tuned for this system. So let's take a look at rainfall totals, the trusty euro in millimeters. Look at this. Yeah, this is going to be a problem. I'm, I'm really concerned about this because if we take a look at the whole life cycle of this storm, we are looking at Belize here. Totals approaching 150 to 250 millimeters of rain in this darker orange. That is essentially getting into 4, 5, this is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 inches. So you're looking at a solid 6 to 10 inches with locally higher. This is a problem. And as we head towards southern part of Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula as well, looking at 6 to 10 plus inches. In some of these mountainous areas, we could see more. So this is very bad news. Not something we want to really hear, uh, but here it is. This, this is the harsh reality of this. Uh, it looks like the Euro is still keeping the heaviest rain away from Honduras, which is good news. We're still getting upwards of 70 to 100 millimeters of rain. That's 2 to 3 inches, but that's way better than 6 to 10 inches just to your north here. And here we go. Tropical Storm Martin. Here is southeastern Canada, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. And take a look at this storm. As we head into Wednesday and Thursday, quickly becoming a hurricane, but merging and becoming an extra tropical system. Yep, here is Iceland and then Greenland up here. And here is Europe. Now, why is what happens if we put this into motion? This becomes a big old occluded area of low pressure, but re-strengthens over here towards the British Isles. And look at this by uh, Monday into Tuesday of next week. Look at this. We got a big old system heading towards you know, the British Isles, France, and Spain. So definitely want to keep an eye on this as impulses of energy head towards Europe. And here in the Western Pacific, take a look at this. So let's back this up here. We have Tropical Storm Nagle here. Definitely not much of a wind producer or surge producer. Just a problem here for South China. The good news is it will be on its way out by Thursday into Friday. You can see it literally just fizzling out. We do have a system just east of Taiwan here. Let's back that up. See how it's starting to develop here. But, you know, it is persistent. We will definitely watch this system as we go towards the weekend. See if it does develop into anything. But the good news is here, look at that. The Philippines are staying clear for the most part. We do have some areas of low pressure out here uh, just east of the Indian Ocean. We'll have to definitely keep an eye on as these will head westward here and may develop into some sort of a system here. 
um, in time. You can see way over here in the Indian Ocean, this is by November 7th. So definitely keeping an eye on this system as GFS kind of spins something up here and moves it towards India. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye on that. Uh, but as we go in time here, there is not too much to talk about here in the Western Pacific, and that's some great news. We have a tro few tropical waves by Friday, November 11th, east of the Philippines here. You can see some of these lining up. So any one of these could develop into a tropical system. As I said, tropical season is not over out here. So definitely want to stay tuned some of these tropical waves as we head towards the middle part of November might try to develop into a typhoon. This one actually towards November 14th here, just east of the Philippines here, you can see, looks pretty promising. So please stay tuned. All right, so let's take a look at the overall pattern here before we get into the medium range model. This is the good old trusty Euro. Good old King Euro, very consistent here. Area of high pressure here across northeastern North America. There is that uh, disturbed, that strong that area of low pressure associated with any tropical systems that might develop on the east side of that towards Puerto Rico. But you see across the east coast, this is going to set you up for a 60 to 70 degree weekend again. This is crazy heading into November. Look at this big old trough out west, though. That's really creating that mega block ridge back east. And it is really persistent. In fact, look at this, this big old broad area of cutoff low across the south east and parts of the Gulf of Mexico and Northern Caribbean has no place to go. So it's kind of just hanging out there. But as we head towards Friday, November 11th, Veterans Day here, look at this. We got a ridge out west here and we are starting to see the hints here of a trough back across the northeast. All right. So here we go. Yep. The boring weather for a lot of you that are waiting for snow. Now, it's interesting to note here on the GFS, this is towards Thursday, November 10th. It's bringing this area of disturbed weather with the tropics cut off low, whatever you want to call it, towards Florida. That is pretty interesting. Keep an eye on it. It is 216 hours out. Not going to put too much stock in that, but definitely showing that this high will block anything tropical from going out to sea and might try to bend it towards the southeast coast. So definitely want to keep an eye on that. But look what the GFS starts to do much earlier than the Euro here. Yeah, this is the polar vortex. And the GFS has been more bullish on breaking off big pieces of energy here and shoving it into eastern North America. So yeah, if the GFS is right here, we could be looking at something related to wet snow here in the eastern part of the country. I'm going to show you something here on the CFS medium range model. Yeah, it's pretty uneventful. I feel like the nice warm weather here across the northeastern part of North America, you'll love this forecast for the first part. There's that upper area of low pressure uh, moving slowly towards uh, the Florida area. So definitely we'll keep an eye on that as we go in time here uh, next week. And that kind of is a feature that kind of hangs around. It's like a cutoff area of low pressure, whatever's left of the tropics by that point. But here's this triple barrel high. You can see this helps develop, look at this, massive ridge out here in the Gulf of Alaska helps spawn this big old massive trough. Now watch what happens as we head towards the middle of November. That kind of pushes to the east and will try to shear off some of this ridge it pushes some of the ridge out of the northeast. We'll have a temporary trough here, a more reinforcing trough in this area of high pressure, this big old ridge here across the southeast. Now, you don't see still no blocking up here in Greenland, which you'd like to see for east coast snowstorms. But look at this. This ridge remains tough now um, until we get to, this is a hint here towards Thanksgiving week. We have a big old broad area of low pressure and we'll have to see if we can get any sort of coastal out of this because look what's going like gangbusters up here. This is massive blocking up here in Greenland. This is extreme blocking. Don't know why I wrote low there. This is a massive area of blocking high here. So look at this. This is crazy. So look at this. This kind of hangs around off the east coast. This is uh the day after Thanksgiving. So we could be looking at a Big, big, big deal here off the U.S. East Coast if things align just correctly. So please, please stay tuned as we go out in time. This kind of reinforces as we head towards December 1st here. Look at this. Yeah, if you're a snow lover here along the East Coast, the Northeast, definitely stay tuned. Things are starting to look a bit interesting. 
HRRR, this is your future radar. Let's take a look. So, yeah, most of the eastern part of the United States, with the exception here into the northeast, we have a few showers going on. But, you know, as we ride into our Wednesday and Thursday, let's take a look here. So, getting into the early morning hours of your Wednesday, just before sunrise. So, yeah, we have this system down south here, but for the most part, the northeast is looking really nice here. So let's take a look as we continue to head towards noon, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Wednesday here. Look at this. Just a picture-perfect day across the northeast. It's not going to feel like November. It's almost going to feel too good to be true. And look at this system down here along the outer banks here. It's kind of washing out most of the heaviest showers and thunder showers will remain off the coastline. So that's some really good news down here. And look at that, you're staying really clear across much of the western part of North America, or the northeast for that matter. Take a look at this. So we're going to eke out another good day on Thursday here. Here's through 2 p.m. Thursday, looking nice and beautiful. And John here from Islip, New York. Take a look at this on October 31st, Halloween, looking at a very mild one. Temperatures across the northeast were well into the 60s and even some areas approaching 70s. So crazy times here in the northeast. Get out there and enjoy. All right, so looking at temperatures here, this is just craziness. You know, the west, yeah, you're definitely feeling winter here. But look at this, 70s all the way up into the Dakotas, almost 80 here. This is crazy. And even in the northeast here, we're into the 60s. That's very, very warm for this time of year. This does not look like November. I'm all sure out west here, but look at this. You can definitely see the demarcation zone here as we go into Thursday and to Friday. Take a look at this. Friday, yeah, we are definitely really warm. Look at that. Every place above 80 along the Gulf Coast here. And look at this. We're pushing 70 degrees in Rochester, New York, 70 in New York City, 66 here in Boston, 68 in Albany. As we head towards the weekend, wow. Every place in New York, Pennsylvania, and New England here just about except for Maine is into the 70s. 76 in Pittsburgh and 72 in Cleveland. Wow. And look at that Sunday. Th this, is, this is crazy. 70s for the Northeast. And that will continue at least as well into the second week of November. Extended outlook from hometown viewers. Binghamton to Scranton's upper Susquehanna River Valley of New York and Pennsylvania. Look at this. Wednesday through Sunday. Is it November? Look at that, 64 all the way up to the lower 70s by the weekend. So the warming trend is real. Look at those overnight lows by the weekend. 53 and 61 is a low. That's not even, that's well above your average highs. And getting into the lower 70s, we'll have a chance of rain later in the day Sunday with some clouds rolling in. But you know what? You can't ask for a better weekend. Look at that, TGIF, even nice, sunny get out there and enjoy. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern and Northeastern as well. Guess what? Winter weather outlook, it's in the description in the link down below. Also the link in this video. You're probably seeing it on the screen now. Click it. Go to my winter weather outlook. Watch it. You'll love it. And Facebook at Media Mark. Also Weather Northeastern. Also Hurricane Northeastern at Twitter at Weather Eastern. MediaMark.com, WeatherNorthEastern.com. 